Oh! <laughs> 
of all the Lord, the King of kings, the Lord of
Almighty God, we are here to worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, the great I am that I am. He was, he is, and he is to come. We thank you. Unchangeable God, we bless your holy name. Immutability of God, it changes not. There's nothing to add to him, and there's nothing to take off of him. He is perfect in all his ways. My Asherakei, mighty God, we thank you and we bless you. Even Lord Jesus, we thank you for the finished work of the cross. We give it praise, we give it praise, and we give it glory for all that you have done. Heavenly Father, give us the spirit of understanding that we will understand the fullness and the finish work of the cross. That we will know the mind of God, the mind of Christ, the character of Christ, the love of Christ for the saint. Because Jesus paid the price on the cross. He said it is finished. Father, we thank you for everlasting life. We thank you for eternal life. We thank you that even the Bible says we are joined here with Christ Jesus. We will reign with him. We will, we will judge the world with him. Hallelujah. We thank you and we bless you. We give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, somebody bless the Lord. Come on, somebody. Ah, shake me. Come on, come on. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. He was, he is, and he is to come. Unchangeable God. Mighty God. That is our God. That is my God. That is our God. Father, we thank you. Mighty God, we bless your holy name. For there's no one like you. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no one like Yahweh. Oh, come on, somebody bless him. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody exalt him. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Mighty God, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. As a Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit of God, come and do your thing. Holy Ghost, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. And then, Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we worship you. Ah, ah, glory. Yes, he's there. He's there. He's there. Ah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Come on, Pastor, blow that thing. He's here. He's here. you Lord in Jesus name come on in Jesus name amen thank you Jesus you may be seated my God is rich the glory of God is down glory Holy Spirit you are welcome Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit of God, we welcome you. Oh, Jebe, we welcome you. Yeah, we welcome you. Yes, it's moving. Father, we thank you. My God, we bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
Well, I greet you all in Mazopa Zeye. Yeah. I greet you all in Jesus' name. I welcome you to Everlasting Life Christian Center. Especially our first time guests. We welcome you. Of course, I know him very well. Brandon was some schoolmate in high school. Yes. I'm glad you are here with us. And I greet all the members, pastors, ministers here. In Jesus' name. Amen. Also good to see Kweku brothers. Juno, Junior and, uh, and the other brother, Kwame. We greet you all in Jesus' name. Amen. What an awesome worship. We bless God for that. Yes. I was deep in the spirit. I didn't know they finished. Man. Glory to God. Yeah, that's what we love to do here. We love to praise God and to worship God. We are created to do so. Amen. Amen. I have been teaching since the day of Pentecost, the Friday of that week of Pentecost. I've been teaching on the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? I've been teaching on that, uh, that Holy Spirit is not fire, but it purifies like fire. Holy Spirit is not water, but it cleanses. Yeah, the children ministry can go. I know sometimes they believe children ministry can go to the room. Amen. Last week, I taught on the purposes, the assignment, and the function of the Holy Spirit. I believe I gave you about five points. And the fifth point was that the Holy Spirit helped us to fulfill our roles and responsibility. The Holy Spirit of God, he helps us to fulfill our role and responsibility. But the Holy Spirit does not do it for us. We are responsible to do our role and our responsibility. What the Holy Spirit will do, he collaborate with us. That's why it's so important in the kingdom to know who is the Holy Spirit, to have relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because in the kingdom, without the Holy Spirit, you cannot properly function in the kingdom of God. No, you cannot. Because the Holy Spirit is the one that leads us, that directs us, that gives instruction what to do. Now, in the teaching of today, I will show you how the Holy Spirit collaborate with us. Collaborate with us. How he work with us. We do the natural. But the Holy Spirit do the supernatural. Amen. We are not called to do supernatural. But the Holy Spirit's leadership is supernatural. But we are called to do natural. Amen? But the Holy Spirit will help us supernaturally. In this teaching, you will see very clear. It's very important to know this. And it's very important to have relationship with the Holy Spirit. Every step you take, the Holy Spirit will lead you. He will direct you. Amen? Amen? Let's go to Zechariah chapter 4. Zechariah 4. I will read about four, five verse. Then I will begin to teach. And today's topic is seven manifestations of the Holy Spirit. We will cover maybe about three or four today. And we continue next week. God's willing. Seven manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Zechariah 4, 1. Now the angel who talked with me came back and wakened me up. 
the angel will talk with me. For us now, we have the Holy Spirit that talked to us. Is that correct? In those days, the angels will appear to men of God and give them revelation. Even today, the angels still do that. Can I appear to you, a friend of the prophet? It will show you some things in the supernatural. Some things that we don't know. Some things that are not in the natural realm. But Zechariah was saying, there's a regular angel that God has assigned to him that always visit him and give him revelation. That's why he said, the angel what who talk with me. There's a certain angel that will appear to him and give him the revelation. So he said, the angel came back. In other words, the angel brought a revelation to him. But this revelation was not reality, but this revelation was what? Come on, can you say symbolic? It means symbolic. That means it has to be interpreted. It needs an interpretation. Some of you have dreams that you don't understand. It don't make sense. In the natural realm, but the Holy Spirit can give you the interpretation. So the angel woke him up. He said, what do you see? So I said, I am looking. Remember, this was a dream. He said, I am looking. And there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it. And on the stand, seven lamps with seven pipes. So the seven lamps. Then he continued. He said, two olive trees. Somebody had a revelation the other day. They saw two olive trees. Who's that? They have a revelation. We are going there. They saw two what? Olive tree. They saw two olive tree. I buy it. One on the right of the bowl and the other on the left. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? He saw the vision. He knew what he saw. But he didn't understand the meaning of it. How many have had a dream? You knew that this dream that you had is very important. But you have no understanding. They had no understanding. I truly believe God always speaks to us. To direct us. To instruct us. To inform us. To prepare us. To empower us. But Zachariah did not understand what he saw. So he asked the angel. Say, what are these, my Lord? Then the angel would talk with me, answer, and said to me, do you not know what are these? And I said, no, my Lord. So he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Can I explain for a few minutes? Zerubbabel had an assignment. A purpose to build a temple for the Lord. Zerubbabel started the assignment. He laid the foundation of the temple. But the enemy came in. God at first, the enemy went to him. They wanted to build the temple together with him. Thou shalt not build with the enemy. Okay. Thou shalt not build with the enemy. Thou shalt not walk with the enemy. They came to him. And they said, we're going to join you and do this work together. Zerubbabel refused. Ah, ah. I'm going to build this temple. 
me and my people. Because you have no part in us. They got upset. And they attack him. Sometimes we are the one that he allowed the enemy to come in. We thank you. Because there's no discernment. There was no discernment. I set everybody to come in. The Bible says, how can they work together? Unless they agree. Some folks can agree with you in the natural realm, but in the spirit realm, they're against you. Oh, no, church, you are not hearing me. I said, we are going somewhere today. Some of us here, we started an assignment well. But the enemy came in. Something happened. And the work stopped. That's what happened to Zerubbabel. This revelation was not for Zechariah. Are you still with me? The revelation was for who? Zerubbabel. But God gave it to Zechariah because Zechariah was a prophet. So he went. So the work stopped. The enemy, they were upset with him because he would not allow them. So they attacked him and their, his assignment, the work that he was doing for God, stopped. Somebody might be here doing something for God years back, but you stop. Something happened. We are in a season of restoration. This is a season of manifestation. What you start, you will continue, and you will finish in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, he that began a good work. I say you will finish it. I say in the name of Jesus, you will finish what you have started. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And that's why. Watch this. That's why. That means that vision was what? Symbolic. That's why the angels went and woke him up. The rubber bear had been sleeping. Remember, the revelation was not for Zechariah. You got to get this. It's not for Zechariah. It's for who? Zerubbabel. God gave the revelation to who? To Zechariah. Because Zechariah, that is calling a prophet to hear from God and deliver a message from God to God's people. So he woke him up. And Zechariah said, he woke me up and see, I was coming out from the sleep. That's what we call awakening. Awakening. It's time to continue what we have started. Now, we're going somewhere, church. Then the angel will talk to me. And son said to me, do you not know what this her? And I said, no, my Lord. So he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Do you see how the Holy Spirit collaborates with us? Holy Spirit help us to fulfill our roles. Holy Spirit help us to fulfill our work, our responsibility. He collaborates with us. He doesn't do the work for us. We do the natural, but the Holy Spirit do what? Supernatural. Come on, somebody say supernatural. Come on, somebody say supernatural. Can somebody say Holy Spirit leadership? It's supernatural. Then he continues and says, Say the Lord of hosts, Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. Who are the mountains? Who is the mountain? I'm going to explain. Every God given assignment or purpose, there's always a mountain in the spirit realm that want to stop us from doing God's work. 
the river bear is not responsible to move the mountain. Aha. Uh -huh. Spiritual mountain. The river bear needs to obey and continue the work that is taught. As he continues the work in obedience to God, the spirit of the Lord will move the spiritual mountain that is trying to stop you. Are you hear what I'm saying? It's in your obedience. When you obey the word of the Lord, your assignment is not to move the mountain. Your assignment is to do your work. Your assignment is to do your responsibility. The assignment of the Holy Spirit, as you are going, he will go before you and remove every mountain. So God was speaking to the mountain. Who are you? Oh, great mountain. Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. And it shall bring forth the capstone. With a shout of grace and grace. Let me stop here and begin to teach on the seven manifestations of the Holy Spirit in our life. How the Holy Spirit collaborates with us. Number one, the Holy Spirit is the power of vision. Holy Spirit is the power of vision. Holy Spirit is the one that gives vision. Right there, God just gave Zerubbabel a new vision for the assignment that has stopped. A new vision. Whatever you've been doing that stop, what you need, you need a vision from the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible tells us in Proverbs 28 verse 18, it says, when there is no vision, the people perish. But he who keeps the law, happy is he. Let me ask you, what is your vision? Do you see your vision? Do you know your vision? Has the Holy Spirit given you a vision? Come on, church. Do you know your vision? Has the Holy Spirit given you a vision? Because without vision, people perish. The Holy Spirit... Now, giving the room a new vision. Now, can we talk about, the, about what he saw? The first thing the angel asked him, what is this? What do you see? The second thing that the angel asked him, do you understand what you see? One, you can have a vision. Two, to understand the depth, the width, the length of that vision. Do you understand the revelation, the vision God has given to you? One, or Holy Spirit, the vision. I pray in the name of Jesus that God will give you a new vision for your assignment. In the name of Jesus Christ. The prophet saw lambs. And the lambs represent life. Remember the assignment stopped. It represents what? Light. Which illuminates the heart and mind of people. And the lamb born bright in our life. So in other words, God was just telling him that this new vision will be successful. You might be in darkness right now, but light has come. 
Because in darkness, we cannot see. Are you hearing me? Because that kind of light will shine in darkness. The assignment stopped because the enemy attacked. Because the assignment stopped, it became dark. Now, light has come to illuminate, to shine, to give us direction. Are you hearing me? Vision also is a preserver. For it was the vision that Joseph saw. Joseph saw vision of greatness. And that vision of greatness actually came to pass. Remember the story of Joseph? He saw a vision. What was the vision? He saw a vision that he's going to be great. That his brothers will bow before him. And also his father will bow before him. He had a vision of greatness. Do you have a vision of greatness? What vision has God given to you? Amen. He saw that vision. Then he went to his father and told his father and his brother about the vision that he saw. And then what happened? They got mad with him. They were upset with him. That who are you? That we're going to be bound down to you. You are only a young boy. How come your brothers, your father, and your mother will be bound down before you? The young man lacks wisdom. Not every vision that God gives us, we tell everybody. Some vision is just for you. And then the second time, he saw it again. The young man don't know what to do. He went again and told his brother and his father. He don't know what you tell them. I am going to be greater than you. Even though I'm the youngest, but you're going to bow down before me. Not only my brother, but even my father. He shared with them. And then, every vision is not for everybody. The vision God gives you is for you. If you don't understand, pray for understanding. And that's why the angels ask him, what do you see? He saw right. And when he told him what he saw, he asked him, do you understand what you saw? And then we know the story of Joseph. His brother became his what? His enemy. They wanted to abort that vision. They wanted to kill him. You know the story. They wanted to kill him. Until the firstborn, Reuben, intervened and said, no, don't kill him. Let's sell him in slavery. They sold him. And he went, you know the story. He went to where? He went to Egypt. He went to Egypt. Let, let me start, tell you something, and I'll continue to teach. Sometimes, when the enemy trying to destroy the vision of God, what the enemy is actually doing, no, 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 no. The attack became a vehicle to get Joseph to where he's supposed to be. Because Joseph supposed to be in Egypt. Because his greatness, he had to get to Egypt. I don't know. Joseph probably didn't have money to get to Egypt for transportation. But the enemy, the enemy, the enemy, he thought he's destroying the vision. But God is using the enemy for Joseph to get to where he needs to be. They get him to Egypt. He didn't pay for transportation. It was a free ride. When God is on your side, the vision of God cannot be aborted. You will become what God said you will become. Your vision will come to pass. In the name of Jesus, 
tell somebody I am unstoppable because God is on my side I am moving forward they try to destroy him to destroy the vision but they couldn't destroy that vision you know what the Bible says? But God was with Joseph. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah! But God was with Joseph. If God is with you, and no God is with you, your vision cannot be destroyed. The air, God will use the enemy to push you forward. God will use the enemy to chase you to your destination. He's chasing you to your destination. Your vision will not be aborted. He's chasing you. You better run fast. Run fast to your destination. Joseph, hallelujah. Joseph was ordained to be in Egypt. He was ordained to be in Egypt. Every vision that God has given to you, the enemy will not be able to abort it. The enemy will not be able to cancel it. I said the enemy would not be able to nullify it. You will be what God has ordained for you to be. You will do what God has given you to do. You will understand your vision. You will fulfill your vision. That's what? Because the Holy Spirit is with you. Holy Spirit, it will move every mountain, every demonic mountain, every attack of the enemy. It's going to move it. He's going to move it. You know what the Bible says? God said, who are you? Oh, you great mountain. Before me. Before Zerubbabel. Holy Spirit is leadership. is supernatural. Come on, somebody say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, give me vision. Holy Spirit, give me new vision. Because without vision, people perish. I don't want to perish, Lord. Holy Spirit, give me new vision. Give me greater vision. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will see it. And I will understand it. So, Holy Spirit, he collaborates with us. Holy Spirit, give us vision. Joseph, they made up the vision. The vision was given to him by God. Zerubbabel, God gave him the vision. But the enemy attacked him. The vision stopped. Then the Holy Spirit come. He came. He was as an angel. And woke him up. You know what he's saying? It's time. It's time to continue. It's time. Enough sleeping. Get up from your sleep. The vision is delayed, but it's not a denier. Amen. So, number one, Holy Spirit is the power of vision. It is the power of vision. Holy Spirit. Give us vision. And all we have to do is to obey and understand the vision that he has given to us. You have to see the vision. If you don't see the vision, you cannot fulfill it. You have to what? See the vision. You can't become what you haven't seen. You can't become what you don't know. You have to see it. Are you with me? Also number two. Holy Spirit is the power of inspiration. Some people have vision, but ask no inspiration. Some people have vision, but they don't have the understanding of the vision. We must understand what we see. We must understand our vision. So beyond vision, there's the power of inspiration. The angel asked him, 
Do you know what you see? Do you know what you see? Let me ask you your vision. Do you understand it? Do you know it? Do you have inspiration? Because without inspiration, you cannot fulfill it. The angel asked him, what do you see? He saw it. Then the angel asked him, do you understand what you see? Let's go quick to Job 32, verse 7, 8, and 9. I said, they should speak, a multitude of years should teach wisdom. Verse 8, but there is a spirit in a man. And the inspiration of the Almighty gives them understanding. It gives understanding. There's a spirit in you. Hallelujah. There's a spirit. He's the spirit of God. He's the spirit of man. And inspiration of the almighty is given by understanding. If you don't understand, you won't be inspired to fulfill your role. Amen. Understanding. Understanding is so powerful. He said, they should speak. A multitude of years teach wisdom. Multitude of years. But there's a spirit. When you have the spirit of God, that's what we call spirit of what? Understanding. But there's a spirit in the man and the inspiration of Almighty. Give them understanding. Listen to verse 9. He said, great men are not always wise. Please don't go tell your boss that when you get office tomorrow. <laughs> that shall not speak that, but that's the truth. Great men are not always wise. Neither do age teach. Hallelujah. Teach understand judgment. You know what Bible is saying? Age doesn't teach that. It doesn't matter how old you are, you might not have understanding of the things, pay attention, of the things of the spirit. Of the things of, a, of the spirit. There are some things of the spirit are foolishness to some people. So age does not teach understanding. I'm sorry, older people are not here. Age does not. You know what teach understanding? It's the spirit of God. The spirit of God teach understanding. The spirit of God bring inspiration. If you don't understand, you won't have inspiration to fulfill your assignment. You have to be inspired. Yes. Many people have vision. They're just looking at it. What is this? They don't even understand it. I love Zechariah in that dream. He said, I saw this, but what is this? What does this mean? He asked the Holy Spirit. We had a class two weeks ago. Somebody said they had a dream, and they go to YouTube to get interpretation. That shall not do that. <laughs> yeah, where is it? Say they want to walk to YouTube. So get the what? Or Google, is it Google the what? YouTube or Google. So get what? Interpretation. And the Bible says, I think it's correct. I'm here to tell you, it's incorrect. The person that can give you proper interpretation is the person that gave you the dream. Because in that dream, you can see, what is name? Zachariah. He saw it. I saw a lamb. I saw seven, and I saw the bowl on top of it, and the light is on. Amen. What I mean is daytime now. It's time to continue the work <laughs> that you have started. 
And they woke him up. And he came from the sleep. He saw the vision, but he didn't understand the vision. Did you understand? No. Who did he ask? It would be funny for him to wake up and go ask his friend. What do you think about this dream? He asked God, what are these? Amen. Google won't give the correct. It might give you a clue, but not the correct interpretation. You will miss it. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. Amen. When I have a dream, I pray to God to give me interpretation. Amen. Say, God, I need interpretation. Yes. Give it to me. If not, you will what? You will miss it. But let's go back to Job 32, 7. No, we ain't going to Google. <laughs> Somebody the other time too, I was teaching on purpose. Somebody said, well, you know, uh, what about if I go to Google or, or YouTube to tell me my purpose? After service, just ask Google, my name is Sami Fatoki. What is my purpose on the face of the earth? It's going to mislead you. <laughs> Amen? It's going to mislead you. You don't know. You can't know. You didn't design your purpose. The person that designed your purpose is the one that can tell you. Because your purpose is not your decision. Your purpose is your discovery. And you can't discover it on YouTube or Google. Or Apple. Whatever it is, you cannot discover it. It's the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing me? That's why it's good to have what? Relationship with the Holy Spirit. To be able to communicate back to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what is this? I don't understand. Are you hearing me? All right, let's go back to Job. I said, they should speak. A multitude of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in a man. And the inspiration of Almighty gives them understanding. I pray God will give you understanding in the name of Jesus. I pray that the spirit of understanding will be upon you in Jesus' name. Verse 9. He said, great men are not always wise. Neither do the age understand judgment. You know, when, when I'm before God, I act dumb. I ask what? Well, I don't know nothing. Don't act smart in the front of God. I say, I don't know. God tell me, what is this? That's why Moses, apart from Jesus, he has the greatest miracle ministry in the Bible. Do you know why? He never moved on his own until God gave him instruction. He would go to God, what shall I do? And God would tell him. So understanding what you see here and read it, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit had opened his heart to understand what the Lord has given him. The Holy Spirit had to tell him what it is. If not, he would think the revelation was for him. But the revelation was not for him. The revelation was for somebody else. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. So what is your vision? What is your purpose on earth? I remember I was teaching on purpose. I told you your purpose is not your decision. Amen? Can I hear amen to that? Your purpose on earth is not your decision. Your purpose is what? Your discovery. Can we say discovery? Can we say discovery? Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. Amen? Inspiration of the Holy Spirit distinguishes a man and excel him above other. What was the Bible saying? Great men are not always wise. When I say great men, I'm not talking about people in the world. I'm talking about men and women of God. The greatness is the Holy Spirit that made them great. It's God that made them great. It's not their own knowledge. It's not what they know. 
I hear what I'm saying. If you want to be great in the spirit, Holy Spirit have to exhort you. Holy Spirit have to lift you up. Holy Spirit have to empower you. Holy Spirit have to direct you and instruct you. You know why are they great? Because they have relationship with God. It's God that exhort them. It's God that elevate them. And that's what I'm saying in the kingdom of God. To be successful and function in the kingdom of God, you must have relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because if you do what you think, you will miss it. We are led by the Spirit. You know what the Bible says? As many that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the children of God. So I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus that God will give you divine inspiration in all your endeavor in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Because without inspiration, there's no understanding. Understanding. Let's go to number three. Let's go to Zechariah 4, 6, and 7. Zechariah 4, 6, and 7. Remember number one, vision, Holy Spirit is the power of vision. Number two, Holy Spirit is the power of understanding. Holy Spirit give what? Understanding. Number three, well, let's read this. So he answered and said to him, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, not by power, but my spirit. In other words, Zerubbabel cannot do this work by himself. Zerubbabel needs the collaboration of the Holy Spirit. Your assignment on earth, you need the collaboration of what? Of the Holy Spirit. Because the assignment, you will do it not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of the living God. Then the Spirit said, Who are you, O great mountain before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain, and it shall bring forth the capstone with a great shout of grace, grace to it. The Holy Spirit is the zeal of the Lord of hosts who stirred up the forces of God to encounter and overcome such resistance. Number three, the power to overcome every obstacle. The power to overcome every obstacle. When a thing is to be done, however, the enemy, whatever assignment God has given to us, the enemy try to stop us, try to bring blockage and obstacles in front of us. How many have experienced that before? The moment you start an assignment, all these challenges begin to rise up. All these problems begin to occur. Glory to God. But the Holy Spirit is the one that will help us to overcome the force of darkness, constantly resist the good work, especially when you are doing a good work. When you are doing an assignment, there's always an obstacle. But the Holy Spirit will help you to move that obstacle away from you so you can continue to move forward. Whatever it is, it could be a project. It could be things for God. I remember when I was in Zimbabwe, the enemy actually brought some, somebody to stop me from doing what God has told me to do. God sent me to that nation to do something and the enemy used somebody. It was somebody that I've met before. And he came to help. This person wanted to sabotage. But God allowed it. The same thing that happened to Zerubbabel. They tried to come and help him. But this person, listen to me. Listen to me. He's a pastor.
He's a pastor. I know him. I said, well, he came. Shall we help? <laughs> Title can deceive you. He's a pastor. He passed the church. Then he came, he will help me, and then he helped. I was there by myself. Then I allowed him, unknowing. It's good to pray. It's good to have the collaboration of the Holy Spirit. It's good to walk with the Holy Spirit. It was with me. One day we were praying. My wife was on the phone. Rox Roxanne, Stephanie, Jesse, they were there. We were praying because we always pray. Because we need the leading of the Holy Spirit. Remember, it's not by might. It's not by power. By my what? Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. We were praying one day. One of them, I already knew. After I, have, I, I, I brought him in, he was helping. I already knew. Listen, he was wrong. But then you say, okay, he's a man of God like you. I said, something is wrong. I see his way. Thank God for this amen. I see things that he was doing. I said, hmm, something is wrong. We were praying. Guess what they told me? They got the revelation. Somebody got the revelation. He said, you know what I hear? God said that somebody that is helping you is a snowman. Snow. You know what is snow? You know when it's snow, you build a what? Come on. Anybody build a snowman before? Or a snow? <laughs> Great men are not always wise. Mm -mm. They're not always wise. If you want to be great, have relationship with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will reveal some things to you. Holy Spirit will give you understanding. He will give you vision. He will interpret the vision. Not only that, he will collaborate with you. Every obstacle, every hindrance that wants to stop you, he will move it. Not by your might. Not by your power. But by the Holy Spirit. So that revelation came. They say there's a snowman. You remember what I told you? I said, I know who the snowman is. I had the sense. He said, mm, mm, mm. I got to get rid of this guy. But I was looking for a good way to tell him bye-bye. I'm serious. I will tell you what he did. When God gives you assignment, you have to collaborate with the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, it will be unfulfilled. I'm telling you, Holy Spirit has to guide you every step. You have to be praying. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, to direct you, and to reveal some things to you. Because there's some things you need to know. There's some people probably working for you, but they're not with you. I'm telling you. So when they say snowman, I say I know exactly who the snowman is. What is the interpretation of that? When you build a snowman, when it snow, what happens? It melts away. So I told them, I have the, I have the understanding. I know who the snowman is. I'm planning to melt him away. Then we went to the government office. Oh, it's good to have the Holy Spirit. It's good to have the Holy Ghost uh, and to be praying. We went to the government office to submit the corporation information and the things that we need to be doing. You know what the snowman did? He put his name there somehow and he gave himself 70% of the corporation. No, 50, 50% 50 of the corporation. I didn't even know because it's one I was sent to go do my document. Oh God, please, I pray that you will allow the Holy Spirit to collaborate with you. Nothing will be hidden. I'm telling you. I mean, me too, I was shocked. And I, I knew it was a snowman. But I didn't know it would go to that extent. That shocked me. I thought maybe he would give himself at least 10%. 
he gave himself 50%. But even 10%, what do you invest in? Who are business people here? Or lawyer, you know what I'm talking about. How much are you bringing to earn 10%? Zero. I'm the one that feed him. I'm the one that give him money. I'm the one that give him boss money. But I don't, that's why it's good to be good. What you don't, <laughs> the golden rule in business, do unto other. What you want other to do unto you. I don't cheat nobody. And listen to me, you cannot cheat me. It doesn't matter here in America, Africa, in China, even I don't speak the language, you cannot cheat me because the Holy Spirit will interpret Chinese China to me. He will tell me what you are saying. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know, ta -ta 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 -ta. I don't understand, but I have the Holy Spirit. I have the collaboration of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit understands Chinese. Even if you speak any other language, uh, Holy Spirit will interpret. Holy Spirit will tell me and he will expose it. Because there's some things you need to know. And the only way you will know it is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Holy Spirit knows all things. Uh, well, God exposed that. You know how he was exposed? Oh my God. Me too, I was like, huh? I was shocked. I know it's a snowman. I know it's going to go in a few weeks. But I didn't know he did all of that. The person in the office, government office, is some people that they speak the same language. They speak Shona. I speak in the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost will reveal. The person, look at the paper. Look at the paper. Look. He said, sir, this this man, that is his face. Gave himself, he was right there. Gave himself 50%. Is that what you want? Exposure openly. Who are you? Oh, you great mountain that want to stop the work of God, that want to stop my assignment. Only God is going to reveal you, only God is going to expose you. Because I have the collaboration of the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing me? God exposed him openly. I was shocked by saying, uh -huh. I said, you did that? Because you went and did document for me. Had him sign. I told him, I said, no, I didn't do that. He said, really? He said, no. We have to change it. And put the right person. I said, well, you want 50%? No problem. Big money. You didn't invest anything. You don't even ask for 10%. What I will give him? If you're humble, and then I'll give you something. In Ghana, I gave somebody 10%. Yeah. Pastor in Israel, apostle in Israel, and somebody in Ghana. I just gave them 10%. Five, five. If you're humble, I will give him. But you want to cheat. But you don't know that I have the collaboration of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody say Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody say Holy Ghost. And I'm going to stop. Somebody say Holy Ghost. So Holy Ghost, say Holy Ghost. He has the power to overcome every obstacles that want to stop you. In the mighty name of Jesus, He will move every obstacles. It will move every barrier in the mighty name of Jesus. But watch this. Holy Spirit does not do the work for us. It does not. The Holy Spirit is the zeal of the law of old. Who stir up forces of God to counter and overcome such resistance. When God gives you assignment, there's some resistance attached to it. Why? Because we are doing a great work. Every great work, the enemy will try to stop it. However, physical, physically, we are responsible to do the assignment. 
The Holy Spirit is more than able to bring it to pass and overcome everything that wants to stop us, natural or diabolical. Natural or diabolical that stand against us from fulfilling what God has given to us. Amen? Come on, can we say amen? amen. Can we say amen? amen? And I will stop here. Next week, we will continue with number four. Number one, Holy Spirit is a spirit of vision. It's the power of vision. Holy Spirit will give vision. Give you vision. If you lack vision, you need to pray for the Holy Spirit to give you vision. Amen? Your purpose is not your decision. Can I hear a loud amen? amen. Your God-given purpose is not your decision. And then we like to decide our God-given purpose. Amen? That shall not do that. It's not your what? Your decision. It's your what? Can we say discovery? Can we say discovery? It is your discovery. Why? Purpose is what? What's the definition of purpose? Purpose is the original, listen to me, is the original intent why you are created. God does not create if there's no vision. Ah! There's no reason for creation. Purpose is the original intention. Why something or someone was created. God, first of all, will design your purpose. Before you are born. So for you, to decide it, you're going to miss it. The person that know it, oh God, I thank you. The person that know it is the person that created you. You are not here by accident. It's okay, one amen. You are not here by what? Accident. You are here by what? Purpose, and if you don't know, oh God, I thank God for Holy Ghost. If you don't know, Holy Spirit is the power of vision. Holy Spirit will give it to you. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit will give it to you. It will plan. I created for purpose. Man, I love big steak. And you know that God is a good God. I hear them saying. God created man when? At the what? Why? Oh, God. Imagine if you created me first and there's no steak. Oh, my God. There's no food to eat. Are you sure what I'm saying? There's nothing to eat. Our God is a good God. I say our God is a great God. Our God is an awesome God. He created the steak. Oh, my God. And lamb. Eh? Vegetable for Pastor Masha. He created vegetable for Pastor Masha. She loves vegetable. I like my steak. <laughs> he created fish for Pastor Masha. She loves fish. <laughs> Even Pastor Masha called herself. She said she's pescatarian. Is that what they call that? What do you call it? Pescatarian. Pescatarian. You know what that means? They only eat fish. So she's what? Pescatarian. God loves me so much. Let me tell you. When she said pescatarian, I tell people, guess what? I am every terrier. <laughs> Listen to me. Every what? Every terrier. Every terrier. I eat fish. I eat lamb. I eat steak. 
Even pork are blessed, I eat it. What God created are blessed and I eat it because those things were created for a purpose. It was created for us. I'm fulfilling my calling. I, oh God of heaven. I'm fulfilling my calling. Huh? Thank you. I'm vegetarian, Pastor Reggie. Everytarian. Even vegetable. I eat it now. Now. Now, you know, spirit is contagious. I've been with Pastor Masha so long. Even vegetable, I eat it. Then when I finish, where is my? I'm serious. I'm vegetarian. <laughs> God loved me so much because everything that he created is for purpose. It's for us to eat them. That's why God created us when? Last. Last. You know what? God is proving himself at Jehovah. Come on, talk to me, church. At Jehovah what? At Jehovah what? Jehovah Jireh. Let me tell you, everything that you will ever need has already been provided. I'm serious. Everything. Everything. We are the ones that struggle. But when you have the collaboration of the Holy Spirit, it will lead you. It will direct you. Amen. So I don't pray, God, give me anymore. I say, God, open my eyes to see what you've already provided. If you are looking for money, trust God for money, pray for God to give you. But God won't give you money without. I'm going to stop. God will not give you money if there's no purpose for the money. If there's no assignment for the money. Amen. But if God gives vision, he gives the provision. Hallelujah. If you give him vision, he will give you what? The provision. So what you need to do is to ask God, God, you gave me this vision. Now, God, give me what? Provision for the vision. God will never give vision without provision to fulfill the what? So what we need to do is the collaboration of the Holy Spirit that is missing. I'm telling you, it's the collaboration of the Holy Spirit. If that is there, God give you vision, he will give you what? Provision. He will provide the provision. Amen. All you need to do, say, Lord, open my eyes to see the provision that you have already provided. Can I hear amen, church? Come on, can we stand on our feet? Can I hear amen? Can I hear amen? Can I hear hallelujah? Holy Spirit is the power of vision. Can we say that? Holy Spirit is the power of vision. Holy Spirit is the power of? Holy Spirit is the power of understanding. Holy Spirit give understanding. Number three, Holy Spirit have the power to overcome every obstacle. Every obstacle. Glory to God. That the Bible that I'm telling you, we had a big obstacle after I did everything. The snowman is no big deal. That's why God said snowman is going to go by. We're going to melt. That was no big deal. You know what was big deal? Of the provision. It's a big provision. Only I will tell you. Now, it's a big provision. So when we were in Dubai, we were looking for investors. Investor never came. I pray God open my eyes to see investor. Investor never came. Give us provision. Open my eyes to pray the Holy Ghost. No investor. But that country to move forward based on the scriptures, it will move that mountain. God will provide. We continue to move forward. A month ago. Somebody that we asked for an investor. And uh, an investor was on the phone. I was with them. We were talking. It's a businessman, you know, from UK. It's very successful. So the lady told 
team that we have a project in Zimbabwe. And you know what kind of project? Then after we hang up, he called that lady. He said, oh, I like that. I'm interested. Ask him if he needs an investor. After two years. He said, if you need investor, he said, don't leave me. I'm interested in that. Even I'm working with a sheikh in Abu Dhabi. You know, money is no problem. God is my witness. I showed my wife the text. I showed my wife the text. Then I replied. I said, whoa. If it was two years ago, I would take your offer. But Jehovah Jireh provided creative financing. I'm serious. I tell him, I turn it down. I don't need investors. Because I got the revelation of God that we are the investor. <laughs> are you here to say, you are the investor? I don't need it. He said, any amount, millions of dollars, that don't move me. So we are not investors. But two years ago, we just go down. The word is not enough. The work should continue, but what we need is not is already finished. The revelation that we got is good to collaborate with the Holy Spirit. The same thing that happened to Zerubbabel. God told me after. He said, no, you don't need anybody. I'm going to help you. If you bring people in, they will sabotage you. I'm serious. I was so serious. Yeah. I just got a call to another one from Malaysia. I said, come to Malaysia. Any amount you need to help your work in Zimbabwe. You know, I, I just text him. I call him. I say, oh, no, I'm doing a great work in America. Our church have conference in June, July, August, September, October. <laughs> he said, God is my witness if I like to go. I said, I'm not going. So I'm doing great work here in America because the Holy Spirit is finance, is the investor. Holy Spirit is investor. We need the collaboration of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes you need the investor, God will bring you the right person. There's some projects you can't do by yourself. You, you need the investor. And God will bring the right person to help you. You don't work with everybody. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you. Ask the Holy Spirit to direct you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah from Malaysia, he called me and said, well, I'll buy you. He said, you have your white business class ticket. And even if you fly your jet, I ain't coming. We got to be led by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, the guy have jets. He have about, his company have about three or four jets. Even if he sends to America, he said, no, I'm not going. I will only go with the collaboration of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit don't say it, I'm not going to do it. Pray for vision. If God give you vision, it will bring provision. If God give you vision, it will bring investor. Whatever is your call, and understand what you are called to do. Understand the vision. Do you know the vision of what we are doing in Zimbabwe? Really, it's ministry. There's a business part of it. The evangelism is for end time evangelism. Listen to me. It's an end time evangelism to go all over the world and preach the gospel and travel and win soul for Jesus. It's an end time evangelism. That's it for. I understand it. One is to have the vision and to understand it. It's for ministry. It's for God. Amen. Are you hearing me? It's not for my son and my daughter. They have their own job. They're making money. We, we go do ministry together. It's for the kingdom. Everybody will benefit. They will benefit, but for the kingdom of God. I understand the vision. 
The vision is not to splodge it and go all over the world. It's to preach the gospel because there's an end time. I'm telling you, we are in the end time. You don't understand that? There's some people go that are signed to preach all over the world because the gospel of Jesus am to be preached all over the world. If it's not preached all over the world, the end will not come. No, the end will not come. Is it? The end will not come. We have to go as an evangelism. And that's why we are doing the class. Please join the class. Join the class, the school of evangelism. Glory to God, we'll put it together. I'm going to put that teaching together. It's a great teaching for evangelism. When we finish that pastorology, if you don't know, God give me a vision also to have a class for school of mission. A school of mission. We're going to put that together. Amen? we got to give back. Amen. God is teaching us, he's preparing us not to keep it, to go out and share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Come on, somebody am, amen. If you are here, you don't know your vision, you don't need to come out. Let me see your hand. I want to pray for you. You don't have a vision. You don't have a purpose yet. Oh, you don't know your purpose. Lift up your hands to heaven. I'm going to pray for you wherever you are. If you are not sure about your vision, what you are called to do. Do. A- amen. Now, let me explain this. Vision, purpose from God, and your career is two different things. Your purpose and your career separate. Sometimes it might coincide, but it's what? Separate. You can be a doctor and be a prophet. Amen? You can be a lawyer and be an evangelist. Don't give up your career for the purpose until the time comes. You can have your career and have your what? Purpose. The vision I'm talking about, God giving vision, your purpose in life. I know some people, doctor, they were pastor. They started as a pastor. They're doctors. They have their career. But now you know what they're doing? They're using their career. They're still doctors. They're using their career in less fortunate nation to minister to them. They didn't give up their career. Don't give up your career. Your career could even help you to further your work. Your career can open the door for you, for your Two different things. They are doctors. They go to Africa once a year. They spend one month. Bring stuff and check their temperature and help them over there. That is a ministry. Mission. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to put this thing together to teach mission. We should spend time to go out and, and help those that are less fortunate. And help the poor. Black shoe and clothing and bless them. Are you hear what I'm saying? That is mission. Some of you have the gift of mission. Amen. What you dislike is a clue to what you are called to correct. Are you with me? What you like is a clue to what you are called to do. But what you dislike is a clue to what you are called to correct. If you see people don't like people, homeless, or people don't have food, you are called to buy food and feed them. Yeah. And don't wait until you get an investor. <laughs> That's what effort. We didn't wait for investor. We didn't wait for an investor. So whatever you are called to do, go out there. If you have $10, buy food. I was in Baltimore in the other day. There's a street fillet in the uh, Pratt Street. You will know it on Pratt Street. You know? I enter. I buy some food I need to eat. I bought the food. I was coming out. There was an homeless man sat down. He said, please, I'm hungry. So I took my food. I gave it to him. And guess what? I lost my appetite. Honest, I want to go back again. I don't even feel like eating anymore. 
when you fulfill your calling, it's a satisfaction. It's a satisfaction that comes from inside of you. Food will not be nothing. Your purpose, I'm doing my purpose. Your purpose, you don't need to pay me for my purpose. I do it anyway. And if you pay me, guess what? I'll take it. And the church say, Amen. May the Lord bless you. Let me pray for those people. Lift up your hands. I pray that the Holy Spirit will give you vision, a new vision, a fresh vision in the mighty name of Jesus. Even post pandemic, we need new vision. Things have changed. <laughs> Things have changed. God's people, I pray God will give you a vision for this post-pandemic that we are in, in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit will give you vision. Not only it will give you vision, it will give you what? Understanding. In that for you to understand the vision that God has given to you. You don't need to be a prophet. The same way God spoke to Zechariah in the dream. God will give you a dream about your purpose, about your vision, in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit will give you understanding. Father, I thank you. Father, I bless you. Father, I give you praise. Holy Spirit, we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, somebody shout it loud. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. We thank you. You will not perish. You will get vision. Because without vision, people perish. You will not perish. God will give you vision. He will give you fresh vision in the mighty name of Jesus. Can I say this? I'm not talk too much. Is that, did I talk too much? It's not me. It's the Holy Spirit. Great men are not always wise. But the Spirit of God make you wise. Make you smart. If you have a dream and it's talking about your vision, you don't understand. We can write it down. Please. Write it down. What God is telling me that some of you, God will say, I already spoken to you. You just dump it because you don't have understanding. Or it don't make sense to you. When you have it, please write it down. When you write it down, pray. Say, Lord, give me understanding. Give me interpretation. And as you pray for interpretation, God might give it to you and he might send someone to give it to you. Don't just stretch it. Look at Joseph. Look at that vision. That vision came to pass. You remember? The story of Joseph. It came to pass. His brother. Did they bow down to him? His father. Did they bow down to him? But you see, the brothers did not change. Oh God of heaven. They did not change. He recognized them. Come on, read the word of God. He recognized them, right? But they didn't recognize him. They didn't recognize him. Not only he has grown more resources, but he has grown spiritually. Oh God, I need to stop. <laughs> he has grown what? Spiritually. Because most people that are not grown, they will retaliate. No, you didn't hear me. They will retaliate. He didn't retaliate. You know what he said to his brother at the end? He said, God brought me here to preserve you. Oh my God. He has grown. He has matured in the spirit. Most people want to retaliate. I'm going to lock you up. You tried to kill me. Now I'm in power. He understood. That he may empower is only by the power of God. It's only by the grace of God. He understood. He has grown. He was a young boy. When he was sold, he was 17 years old. Go with the scripture. 17. To another nation. As a slave. Oh God, I'm getting revelation today. It doesn't matter where you go, where you are. What really matters? Who is with you? If God is for you, it doesn't matter. You will be successful. That's why it's important to have 
the collaboration of the Holy Spirit. When you have the collaboration, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm a witness to this. A lot I can tell you. People tell me, are you crazy? Why are you going to be here in America? And you're doing here? And you haven't been there over two years. Guess who's there? Chapo Kapatere. Maseke Pepere. Loshoko. I allow the Holy Spirit to appoint people. God said, you just do my work. I'll take care of you over there. It doesn't matter where you go. It's with, it's with you. You know what the Bible says? And the, and God was with what? It's a fact. You know what they say also? Even his master. <laughs> his master. Unbeliever. Egyptian. Saw it. This young boy. God is with him. You know what you do? What you did? What you did? Since God is with you, he goes, what? I'm going to put you in my position. You take care of my house. Everything that belongs to me, you take care of it. He put him in charge of everything that he owned. It's a control. Until you know the enemy came in. Hello, church. Oh, I hear this. Your vision is not dead. Your vision is not dead. Even Joseph, they tried to abort that vision. Send it to where? Send it to the what? Prison. They didn't know they set him up. <laughs> I need to go. I need to go. I need to go. I need to go. Sometimes when the enemy is trying to destroy you, he's setting you up for greatness. <laughs> he's setting you up for greatness. Hear this? Hear this? From the pitch. From the pit to the palace, God allow it to happen. So you might know that it's not Joseph, it is God that elevates. Also, he interpreted dream to them. One of them, the guy, he didn't remember him. He didn't remember him. Remember the story? He didn't remember. The cobbler. And the butler, butler. Can I stop? The cup bearer. He interpreted. Do you know what get him out? That dream to him. You know why he get out? If he has stopped using his gift, he will stay there and die there. Even in time of trials, in time of tribulation, continue to use your gift. It's your gift. See, his circular job, can I talk to you? His circular job took him into where? To the pit. But his spiritual gift, his circular job took him there. He was a housekeeper. But his gift, he didn't stop using his gift. He didn't stop serving God. Even though he was in jail. The Bible said, even though he was in jail, God was with him. Not only he get favor. He get favor in jail. He eat whatever he want to eat. He do whatever he want to do. He was in control. Guess what? Because God... God, God, God was in him. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what has happened to you. God is with you. God is with you. God is about to elevate you. He allows you to go down so he can bring you up. Oh, God. He allows you to go down so he can bring you up. Everlasting life. Get ready, get ready, get ready. We're coming up. We're rising. Oh, come. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Oh, I got to go. I got to go. You might be in your lowest state. I'm telling you, continue to serve God. Continue to do your assignment. Continue to praise God. 
Continue to come to church. Continue to elevate God. Promotion is coming. Elevation is coming. Are you hear what I'm saying? Are you hear what I'm saying? Father, we thank you. Come on, somebody bless him. Come on, somebody bless him. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Joseph, when he was sold, Jacob, good looking. Jacob said, Why all of these things happened to me? Why did this happen? Jacob said, Father, that an engagement that I took you to be my wife. Romans 8, 28. He said, all things. <laughs> all things. All things. Past. Present. Is happening. For greater future. In the name of Jesus. Paul said, all things work together. For good. For those who love God. For those who are called. According to his purpose. Are you called? According to his purpose. Shout yeah. yeah. Everything that is happening. Is happening for good. You are coming out. I said. Oh, you are coming out. You are coming stronger. You are coming greater. Hallelujah. Oh God. Can I tell you this? When the Egyptians they left Egypt, God set them up for greatness. They were down. You know what God told them? You know it. Huh? And night before they depart from Israel, God told them, Go from Egypt. Sorry, from Egypt. He said, Go and borrow. Gold, silver, and fine linen. Go borrow it. Go borrow. They didn't steal it. It was not stolen. They went to do what? Borrow. Amen. Because God said, silver is mine. Gold is mine. And the glory of the other temple will be greater. He told them to go on. Borrow. Borrow gold. Borrow silver from them. I've never found where a slave will go to his master. Hey, master, can I borrow, you know, that nice big gold of mine and the silver and they gave it to him as a miracle. And he gave it to them. Say now you can go. Marian was singing. They didn't believe it. Marian, Prophet Marian, he was singing. It's getting on for my silver and gold. They were singing. They said, "Can you borrow it?" Yes. Two things happen when God delivers you. He judge your enemy and he bless you. Bless you greatly. I said to myself, 400 years of bondage. 400 years of bondage. God restored them in one day. Everything that the enemy have stolen, you are in the season of restoration. Yes! Yeah! Everything the 
that the enemy has stolen. In one day, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I'm here. I'm sorry. When you, when the prophetic is there, sometimes I, I have to go. But I have to prophesy. I see about seven people that in the spirit realm, there's a mountain that is standing to stop them to do what they're supposed to do. Seven. There's a mountain of obstacles that's challenging them. Out of the seven, three, Moses, four, Jonah, three, know that the spirit realm belongs to them. But the four don't know them. But there's a mountain of the enemy to challenge them. The three, oh God, can I speak? The three that know the focusing on the mountain. And the Lord is telling me to tell you today, move your focus away from the mountain. It's not how big is the mountain, but how big is your God? Your God is bigger than that mountain. It's bigger. It's bigger. Is greater than the mountain. The mountain, oh God, I feel you, Lord. I feel you, Lord. I feel you, Lord. That mountain could be money, but your God is greater. Don't focus on your circumstances. Don't focus on the mountain. Today, I'm prophesying under the unction of the Holy Soul. Move your eyes away from the mountain. Even though the mountain is there, begin to praise God. Begin to worship God. Begin to thank God. Begin to exalt God. Your God is bigger than the mountain. Your God is greater than the mountain. It doesn't matter how big is the problem. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. Your God is bigger. That's what Joshua and Caleb, when they saw the giant. They have relationship with God. They saw the giant. They knew that the giant are there. But they have relationship with God. They know their God. The Bible says, they that know their God. They that know their God. They shall be strong. Do you know your God? I hear you. Do you know your God? Do you know your God? Be strong in the Lord. And the power of his mind. They saw the giant. But they said they saw the giants are there. They didn't focus on the giant. They focus on their God. You know, they know how big is their God. Our God is bigger. Our God is Agriba. Our God is huge. Our God will move the mountain. Look and see, oh God, I feel it. I feel it. Do you see what the prophet, the angel told? Zechariah. He said, all you great mountain, you shall be plain. You shall be flat. And Zerubbabel will continue and will finish what he has started. With what? Grace. 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 I gotta go. Grace is supernatural ability superseding your ability. Move the mountain. Come on, somebody give him praise. I gotta go. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise. Come on, somebody give him praise. Come on, somebody give him glory. Somebody, you will finish what you have started. You will finish what you have started in the name of Jesus. And your God will move the mountain. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. Somebody say, Yes. Yes, sir. Somebody say, Yes. Yeah. Somebody say, Yes. Yeah. Somebody say, Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody say, yeah. yeah. Say, Holy Spirit, move the mountain. Holy Spirit, move the mountain. My shepherd said, I got to go. Men say, 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 say,
this will be the name of the Lord. It's given time, people. It is given time. It is given time. And I know that for, I'm going to say, 100% of the people that are here are the ones that are watching. I say, glory to God. It's a joyous time. It's a joyous time to give back to the Lord. Because we can't pay him, my God. We can't even repay him for the things that he has done. Amen. Um, 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 uh, the, the, if you need an envelope, you can grab a, an envelope. And if you, uh, the, the website, I'm sorry, the, the cash app is back up. Let me see, is it here? Um, okay, Zelle, okay, PayPal, okay, cash app, there we go. It's okay, so it, it's the current one there. Amen, glory to God. It is a joy to give. It is a joy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm giving into the anointing. I'm giving into his vision. Glory to God. It's his, this is his vision, people. Amen. It's not his vision. It's not my vision. This is God's vision. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's time to give back. Oh, my, 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 my. I thank God for the people, for the for the ones, my God, that is faithful in their tithes, their offering. My God, they're giving the, the ones that says, listen, I, I am going to do what God, uh, oh, hallelujah, how he, has, how he has helped me, how he has blessed me, how he has given me life. Uh, I'm still thanking him. I'm still breathing. Glory to God. Uh, oh, hallelujah. The enemy wanted me out. He wanted me dead. Glory to God. But I'm not going to uh, allow what he want me because I know who gave me life and only he is the one that can take it. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So let's give, my God, my God, into him. Everlasting life is only his vision. Nobody else can promise everlasting life except Almighty God. Amen. After all, he's the only one. If you look at all the other religions, he's the only one. Jesus Christ is the only one that resurrected from the dead. And he's still alive today. Come on, come on, come on, somebody help me. Come on, come on. Amen. Amen, amen. It's time to give. Glory to God. Amen. Um, the, 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 it's, it's all there. The Cash App, Everlasting Life CC, EverlastingLife.org, uh, forward slash give. Hallelujah. At the website, uh, PayPal and Zelle is finance at EverlastingLife.org. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, somebody, glory to God, the, the, the Spirit of the Lord says, uh, my, 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 oh God, restoration. Not is that it's coming, it's here. And I believe, I believe that one of the, 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 the whomever God chooses to visit, I'm, I'm, I'm one of them. I'm claiming that visitation. Praise the Lord. I claim it for myself in the name of Jesus. I, 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 and, and you better claim it for yourself. Wow, I just saw, wow. Amen. I just saw, amen. Multiple one of you can claim this. And if, if you claim it, you can receive it and you'll get, he will give you a dream. Amen. He'll give you a dream. Amen, somebody. But only if you so desire. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So it's time to give. You all know the, the, the um all the ways to give. And we're gonna follow the direction of Sister Nita. Amen, Sister Nita. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you. Oh my God. I, I wish there was another word I could use other than thank you. I just don't think it's enough. Glory to God. I don't think it's enough. Glory to God just to say we thank you. But Lord, if all we can say is thank you, hallelujah. Well, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your downpour. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the, the word that is not only, my God, it's just not a word, but it's living and it's active. Oh, my God. And it's sharp. That has penetrated so many of our, the cores of our soul, my God. And we never, ever take you for granted. Take your word for granted. Take this house for granted. Because, Lord, my God, where will we be without you? Father, we're about to depart from this place, but never, ever, ever, God, for, 